Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your boy Santi. If you're already here, can please smash the like button. If you're new, can please subscribe to the channel and support your boy as I push my way to 10,000 subscribers. In today's video, we're going to discuss the talking point from Arsenal 2, Brentford 1. Number 1, Declan Rice is the signing of the season and it's not even debatable. Considering the fact that this guy has been so important to this Arsenal team this season in the absence of Thomas Partey. Put him in the DM position is shielding our defense from attacks. Our defense is arguably the most protected defense in Europe this season. Have you seen our XG difference, our XG considered and our XG OT considered? Put him in the number 8 position, this minute is lunging into tackles in this end of the pitch and the next minute is providing assist in the other end of the pitch. And the fact that he's been the solution to our set piece problems this season is another important reason why this guy was signed in the first place. His delivery just needed someone to get on the end of it. Is either you have the ball in the back of the net or you're drawing a massive save from the opposition goalkeeper. And if you look at his numbers, he's managed five assists so far this season and scored six times himself as well. We really have him going head to head with Rodri, who I consider the best DM in the world at this moment. Only two players in the Premier League this season have 30 plus clearances, 30 plus tackles made, 30 plus areas just once. 30 plus touches in the opposition box, 5 plus assists and 5 plus goals. Rodri and Declan Rice, midfield general. This guy has been incredible since coming to this club. A lot of people have been waiting to talk about his price tag since we made that signing because it's over 100 million. And a lot of people have been shouting, oh, he's overrated because he's English, this and that. And seven months later, nobody has been able to mention a single word about the price tag of Declan Rice that shows you how good he is consider consider the fact that he plays in in in, in a um a league that comes with pressure like English Premier League and nobody has been able to mention his price tag just goes to show how massive he's been for us this season before we go on let's talk about the performance of Gabriel Magales with his rating of 7.2 Gabriel Magales played 90 minutes made four clearances one block shot, zero interceptions, two tackles, was dribbled past zero times, at 77 touches, completed 56 of 62 passes at 90% accuracy rate, one five of six grand dress, one four of 11 area dress, lost possession six times, committed two fouls. He's been really, really massive in this team this season. And one of the most consistent players this season that is hardly had a bad game this season. Is so so good on the ball, he's improved massively on the ball, but that's really that goes under the radar. Consider the fact that Saliba on the other hand is so so slick with it, and whatever Gabriel does in that aspect doesn't get talked about enough. But it's really really good on the ball and is improved massively defensively as well. Is that bozo gene that he had last season always committing an error here and there has totally vanished this season. I can't even remember the last time. He committed an error or looked like he was committing an error in this team. So it's really, really been good for us this season so far. Number two, Kai Avert is clutch. When the occasion is big, this is the guy that managed to step up over and again. And it's been the same case over the course of his career. Back at Chelsea, scored the goal that won them the second Champions League. And during the club World Cup, scored the goal that won them the club walk up as well scored during the regular time and i think he ended as a penalty scored the winning penalty as well and since he came to this club first half of the season against brentford against manchester city at the emery stadium provided the assist that led to the winning goal a team we haven't beaten in the league for as long as i can remember and this same fixture in the first half of the season at brentford scored the winning goal in the dying minute against Lothian town got the equalizing goal and again today, scored the winning goal in the 86th minute to send us to the bar, um, to the top of the table for the second time this season. Because when he scored that goal at Brentford in the first half of the season, he sent us to the top of the table. And again in this game, he has sent us back to the top of the table. If that's not impact, I don't know what it is. And for the first time in his career, Kayavas has scored in four consecutive Premier League games against Burnley, against Newcastle, against Sheffield and against Brentford, sending the Gunners to the top of the table. This guy is Mr. Clutch and a lot of people, you know, wrote him off when he came to this club, including some Arsenal fans didn't believe in him. For me, he had some poor games in the first half of the season and he had some good games as well. But this second half of the season is really, really been consistent. 
scoring goals, providing assists, getting stuck in is really is been everywhere so far. This is playing it up front this second half of the season. So I really wish it continues this form to the end of the season because now Chelsea fans are trying to say some copium to us like, oh, this is Avat every match of every season but let's see what happens going forward i really hope he keeps this up going to the end of the season but even if he doesn't he's managed to make his impact in the title race so far because without him against brentford in the first half without him in that game yesterday we probably wouldn't even be in the title race right now so give him his credit number three respect ben white i think this guy is the new mr reliable from playing center back to playing right back and now being played as an inverted right back is really really been good the second half of the season it was he was so so shaky in the first half of the season inconsistent but since he started playing in that inverted right back role is really really been good and without him we wouldn't even win this game man of the match performance from him yesterday provided two assists and was really really good aided our build up going forward and even aside that defensively he's being solid as well it was my own it was my man of the match in that game yesterday and it's also good to see how massive he's been this second half of the season how massively he stepped up in that inverted fullback role in the absence of timber tomiyasu and zinchenko and the fact that kivio has been struggling in that role in the first half of the season and the second half, say we have to flip it. We have to flip it the other way around and try it from the right uh, right hand position. And it's really, really been working so far. So yeah, give him his credit as well. In that game, he played 90 minutes, provided two assists, had 84 touches, completed 63 of 71 passes at 89% accuracy, three key passes, the most of the game alongside Trossard and Odegaard, completed two of five crosses, which led to the two goals. Completed one of four long balls, created two big chances, one one of two grand dress and one one of two area dress. He really had a good, a very good game. He's a no-brainer. He was the deserved man of the match in that game. Number 14, which seems like an uncomfortable conversation, but I think the gap between Raya and Ramsey is wider than me personally thought. My conviction before now was the fact that, okay, Raya is better on the ball than Ramsdale, but Ramsdale is a better shot stopper, which I still believe so. But I've always thought the gap between Raya's ball playing ability and Ramsdale's ball playing ability is like this. But that game yesterday showed me it's actually as wide as this. Because Ramsdale, a lot of people were putting it down to rustiness, but for me, the mistake that led to that um, Brentford goal wasn't down to rustiness because he had all the time he needed on that ball could have passed it to Saliba on the right side of the pitch could have launched it forward earlier before he did it was just indecision from him for me and he was complacent on the ball got scored got punished for it and even aside that before then his long balls was way off only managed to complete six long balls in the entire game yesterday and there were some um the, some points in the game where we could have had a counter attack but he didn't have the courage to do it, I, could, I, I can, uh, you know, make, take excuses for that. The fact that he, he has not played a lot of games this season, he's not confident enough to take that kind of risk. If he gets it wrong, the next minute we are back defending. So yeah, I understand that. But the error that led to that goal could have been avoided. And even though he, he redeemed himself for me in the second half, made crucial saves to keep us in the game, but the mistake he made in the first half of the game could have been avoided. So yeah, I'm afraid to say it's time at this football club might actually be coming to an end. Before we move on, let's talk about the performance of Leonardo Trossard, who stepped in for the injured Martinelli. Played 79 minutes, had two shots on target, completed 3 of 4 dribbles, 54 touches, completed 31 of 36 passes at 86% accuracy rate, made 3 key passes, the most of the game alongside Odegaard and Ben White. One five of ten grand draws completed in zero area dress, lost possession ten times, made three fouls, was fouled twice. This guy, every time he every time he steps in for Martinelli, he always have a decent game. And this bring me to the fact that okay, Bukayo Saka on the other hand needs his own Leonardo Trossard, someone that can come in for him and still manage to put in a very decent performance, someone that can be relied on that you know you can have confidence in when called upon 
a lot of people, including the manager, doesn't have that confidence is in Reese Nelson right now. And going into the summer, a decent backup needs to be prioritized for Bukayosaka because this game yesterday, if we had a decent backup, I don't even think it will start the game in the first place because we have Porto on Tuesday, which is uh, a must-win game and is really going to be a tough game. We need as many fresh legs as we can get ahead of that game. But the fact that Bukayosaka doesn't have a decent backup, he, he couldn't even get any rest in that game yesterday. He played the entire game and still will still be expected to start again as Porto in three days time so please going into the summer get him his decent backup lastly i'll talk about the general team performance the start from the game reads 71.5 percent ball percentage to brentford's 28.5 percent six shots on target for arsenal four for brentford 17 shots for arsenal nine for brentford 738 touches for arsenal 385 touches for brentford 564 passes for arsenal 226 passes for brentford 8 tackles to Brentford's 13 tackles, 7 clearances to Brentford's 33 clearances, 10 corners to Brentford's 4. Arsenal was offside once and Brentford was off offside. The fact that we made them at 36 clearances in that grid, do you know how dominant you have to be to have your opposition clearing the ball out of their own half 33 times in a 90 minutes game? And that's how we've been over the course of the season. We've suffocated team, choked them. No matter what you do, you really can't get the ball against us. I think the only team that has managed to do something against us in terms of control is City, Liverpool and Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. It was a dominant performance yet again yesterday and everybody had a good game. Ramsey barred that Aula in the first half and his poor touches, his, his poor long balls made a decent, uh, made three decent saves in the second half to keep us in the game. Ben White, incredible. Saliba, right is wrong against tony yesterday at the zone because he have he, he's had a poor reputation against tony up until this moment gabriel magales reliable brilliant consistent you name it and kivio again had an incredible game Giorgio was brilliant so good to see odegaard had a very beautiful game as well created three chances bukasaka had a very good game. Leonardo Trozard had a good game. Kaiava came clutch again, won us the game. And I think the guys that came off the bench had their own contribution as well. Rhys Nelson came on, had his contribution. Zinchenko came on and made his contribution to ensure we win the game. And it was a massive three points at the end of the day. Top of the table, awaiting what Liverpool and Man City would have to play today. And I really hope they play out a boring draw. So we stay top of the table going into the international break. And this brings us to the end of the video. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Smash the like button. Who was your man of the match? Get involved in the comments. And thank you so much for your support. I'll see you on the next one.